Ladies and gentlemen, from Bonner Springs, Kansas, Kansas City Knights. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, episode three, season one of Kansas City Knights. I'm Brian Rice with Shannon Gieber. Hello. Hey. And our guest today is Brad Gaddy, formerly of Outhouse, currently of the Zeros and Weber. <laughs> <laughs> so not here the, we go. Not the grill. Not the <laughs> <laughs> I, I did appreciate the tour that you gave me the other month when I was uh, when I did the company party. And so that was very I, that was very cool. Well, it's a it's a nice place, and um, you know Kim Pours, yes, uh, my drummer's wife, Sean Pours' wife. She did an excellent job setting everything up. Um, you know, there was a cigar bar, huge charcuterie board, whiskey sampling, whiskeys. Bar. All kinds of stuff. Which I appreciated because I discovered a new whiskey, uh, the uh, Blue Note. Uh, here Blue we go. Note whiskey. Remember I brought that Blue Note that other time? I finished it off for you. Yes. Who makes the Blue Note? It's uh, That's the company. They're based in Memphis, Tennessee. Ooh, yeah, Memphis. It's, uh, Shannon is becoming something of a whiskey connoisseur like me since I we am. started hanging out more because yes. I became a whiskey connoisseur. Without hmm. ice. What, they call, what do they call it? Neat. 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 It's neat. neat. Neat on the rocks is with ice. Yes. Neat, neat is just by itself room temperature. Okay. Fine. What's your favorite whiskey? Old Forester is my current lineup. That's my favorite right now. 1920 is the best, but my personal favorite is 1910. But the 86 proof is the affordable daily sipper option that I go for. How ca more Kansas can you get about this? We're on Kansas Avenue. <laughs> I'm, I see, I'm, looking at the, I'm looking my, at the street sign right now. My deck here on the back of the house is I think it's good. Adjacent to them. It's a great weather day. It's September. Yeah, it's we beautiful. you know we won't have many days like this for much longer. So let's just like take advantage while we're here. Let's talk to uh, Brad Gaddy. Yeah, we have a, a guest. Bit. Why are we talking about fucking whiskey when we have Brad Gaddy as well, our guest? Because I like whiskey and we like oh, whiskey. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that's where the conversation goes. It's like. You know, um, how did you start? What well, I mean, I you know everybody starts with guitar. You didn't play bass, but you you as long as I've known you since 1986 or seven, you've been a bass player. That's so right. So how did what did you know? Start with that. Where did it go? How did that? That's a good start? question. So I started playing guitar when I was in seventh grade. Um, no, I'm sorry. Um, seven years old. Oh, wow. Um, I played my first performance when I was in fifth grade with the uh, choir singing in oh, elementary school. Okay. And we were, we were doing this performance, and I had the sheet music in front of me, and I had practiced so much that I learned the music note for note. So... At one point, I stopped looking at it, and then I forgot where I was, and I lost my place, and it was embarrassing and all of that. But then in uh, high school, I was still playing guitar with a band, well, a wannabe band. We didn't have a bass player. And uh, we kept learning all these songs, a lot of Black Sabbath and I don't know. All that stuff yeah. from, from, from the 70s. Why not? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, we couldn't even find a bass player that could do, like, say, for instance, uh, Van Halen running with the devil. Like, bomb, 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 bomb. Yeah. Couldn't even find somebody to do that. So I actually went out and bought a bass. And showed up to practice one day, and I'm like, I'm playing bass in the band. And that's where it all took off. Cause wow. I was like, that's, that's incredible because mm -hmm. the joke is that the bass players are the lame one in the band. You see the memes on Facebook, like the bass player is just the guy. And the, to, to, be the, to decide that you're going to be the guy that's on bass as opposed to guitar, which is the more glamorous. It was, it was. It was a tough decision, except there were two things that were driving that. Actually, maybe three. But one was that um, we couldn't find a bass player. Mm -hmm. Two, 
was that the other guitar player was uh, a little bit better than me. Mm-hmm. Like, not at that point, not, you know. Who was the other guitar player then? His name is Nathan Cook. Okay. And he actually plays uh, in a band that, well, he went he went to uh, Berkeley School of Music. Dang. And then he started playing jazz forever. So, at that point, too, Rush was the only band for me. Like, I didn't, I hey. was like, hey, there's other cool mm-hmm. stuff out there, but Getty yes. Lee is the thing, and my na- right. last name's Gaddy, and people can yes. call me that makes sense. Gaddy Lee, no. and, right. Right. right, you know, from there, it just, well, there was some weed involved, too. Oh, hey. <laughs> But so from there, I, sh- I showed up with a bass, and I'm like, I'm the bass player. And then um, Geezer Butler, Black Sabbath. Yeah, great. I learned to love him a lot, and he was a huge influence in my playing, which okay. for good or bad, I don't, I don't yeah. know. He was like, but he's got some really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, do, do, do. Boo, do, 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 do. And the edited version, Brad did right, this for okay. 10 straight minutes. So, um, yeah, I don't have a guess on that. What song was it? War Pigs. Oh, I'm so stupid. Uh, hey, real quick. Seven years old is pretty young to be doing, picking up a guitar. Who was, what was that? How did that happen? Who Was, was there a person that made that happen for you or prompted that? Well, so I got, I got really interested in guitar. My mom played piano. Okay. And uh, I wanted to learn guitar. So I started taking music or uh, guitar lessons at the tune shop in Prairie Village. Wow. Okay. And uh, my guitar instructor was named Carrick Munchton. Wow. And he ate, he ate. Why am I visualizing Carrot Top, the comedian? Oh. I don't know. But it was, it was kind of weird because he was a little bit freaky dude. Mm-hmm. And um, he would sit there, and because my lessons were like at 6 o'clock or something, he would be eating his dinner every time I was in there. And he had he would always be eating like this roast beef sandwich on uh, sliced bread like that he brought from home and was kind of hanging out of his teeth. And it was, it, was, it was a really weird experience. So anyway, so I started taking... Was it one of those scenarios where you're in a small room cooped up together and you could actually smell oh, yeah. the food I, that he's uh, eating? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a <laughs> tiny room. <laughs> tiny. Jesus. It's like a ba- bathroom. So uh, my mom really wanted to make me practice all the time. And I wasn't a big fan of doing something that I didn't want. And so after about six months, I'm like, I'm done. I don't want to. I don't want to play anymore. And then about six months later, the bug hit me again. And then I would lock myself in my room for three or four hours a night wow. and just play. Guitar. What, play guitar. like Beatles? I mean, you had some music or some... Oh, yeah. No, a okay. lot, of, lot of Rush, a lot of uh, 70s, okay. 70s music, right. you know. I was born in 1969, so... Okay, yeah, me too, sure. Yeah. Yep, a lot of 70s music okay. uh, hit hit right in there some bgs no no not Whatever. the bgs uh, <laughs> gu- guitar rock hollow notes maybe yeah well no bon oh. jovi death leopard did you just say bob jovi <laughs> <laughs> i i did the podcast with him yesterday as a matter I of know, fact bobby care i did it the, sounded like you said bob jovi bon jovi i meant to say bon jovi maybe the bob jovi was this residual off for me hey. cool stuff that was a right good there. that was a good experience yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys are a cool experience. Ah, experience. <laughs> experience that. So, okay. All right. So, what was the first... What? By the way, what high school did you go to? I went to Shawnee Mission North. You went to North. All right. What was the first, like, getting together with some bros kind of thing? Where you played... Played. Shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a band. I'm not, I've never been in it, No, no. He's, he, it feels like... Everybody was this big community in this circle of friends who knew each other at that time. To this day, I mean, that you cross paths at some point. Do you need to switch seats? No, I'm good. Okay. You know, like whether you know, it's like whether it's the guys from Perpetual, obviously Bill Lattice and 
you know, Ethan Pritchard from another circle of people and Jerry, you know, I'm just thinking of all these people that who knew each other in that era. Like, I mean, who did you really meet first? That's still you're you're still talking many years later. However, do, does the audience know perpetual change? Well, we could fill them in. Hey, Jim, we interviewed Jim PC. Parker last week yeah. for yeah. perpetual change. I yes. saw yeah. I saw pictures playing darts and stuff yes. like that. Yes. Get ready for that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, one of the uh, early experiences with Nathan Cook and uh, our drummer was Randy Thomas, who uh, used he most recently owned Mission Bowl. Okay. okay. Yeah, he All worked. Right. He worked there when we were growing up. It was awesome. We'd go in the back. Wow. Mission Bowl. Party. Or, party. Yeah, that's you know what right. I mean? Sure. Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, Mission Bowl. Mike Bosley and uh, and I think it was Jim. It might have been um, um, Bill. Lattice. No. No? No, he, hey, was, you know, he, he went to he, North. He, about the same time he, he was. I got a story about Bill, too. But, okay. But Mike Bosley took us to this place, Mid- Midwest Music, because we wanted to buy a PA system. And he knew all the people there, and so they went out there with us, and it was uh, it was Mike and Jim. The person who presents himself as Mike Bosley, because I swear to God, the photos of him from that era look like a totally different person than, the, than, than who think? I know now. Because um, oh, he wears a ball cap all the time now. Oh, with yeah, glasses. but he looked like yeah. Sting back then. <laughs> Back then, <laughs> with a mullet. <laughs> all the, you know, all you bass players had the same haircut back then. They take us and help us buy our uh, our first PA system. So that was that was kind of the connection there. Um, Perpetual Change played my high school reunion, or Re- uh, sorry, prom. My high school prom, and Bill was in the band at the time. Yeah, and it was all the same members. That would have been eighty six, eighty seven. Yep. Were you friends with Bill in high school? We weren't like friends. We knew each other. You graduated the same year, right? Though, right? Uh, he graduated a year before I did. Oh, okay. He's older. Right. He's an old dude. Yeah, so that would have been 86. He gra- you graduated in 87, I'm That's, assuming. That, yeah. So, like, when we were in high school, Bill and I, um, there was an opening in jazz band. And I wasn't getting considered because I refused to play. Because to, to be in jazz band to play guitar or bass, you had to play another instrument. And I played guitar at the time, and I didn't want to play another instrument. And I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Well, Bill quit jazz band, so there was an opening. And so I got the audition, and I, I got the job. And so I, the first time that I really hung out with Bill, I went over to his house, and his mom opens the door and introduced me, probably gave me a purple Kool-Aid or something, and uh, went up to Bill's room, and we listened to some things like Rush. And uh, then started to work on like Sausalito Strut for jazz band, that kind of okay. thing. So, yeah. Sausalito sure Strut, it sounds like a standard jazz song, I'm assuming. It's not, it's, it's not even really jazzy. It's more like uh, jazzy in the sense of, so in jazz band, we had this, uh, there's a brand of amplifier called Custom, spelled with a K, Custom, and it's all padded and stuff. And uh, a lot of what we did was play the uh, pep rallies, volleyball games, basketball games, all that kind of stuff. And this amplifier had a built-in reverb unit. And so the reverb is what makes it sound like you're in a cave thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular one was a spring reverb. And so you could hit the amplifier and it'd go... (laughs) Make this big, horrendous, like, explosion. And uh, I made the band teacher cry because occasionally, like, while we were playing, I would reach back and hit the <laughs> amplifier to make this sound during, uh, during volleyball games. So, nice. anyway, I feel bad about it because she literally cried. Um, probably not the first time she's cried about, you know, <laughs> about a bag. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, it was probably not. <laughs> Okay, so you you graduated high school. I I, I met you at this point. Hey, I that's a that's, you a, guys, that's hey, a big here's the thing. That's, that's a big, big assumption that I graduated high school. Oh. No, I did. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, G E D. No, no, that's uh, no, that's good because yeah. you guys, Shannon and Brad here, you guys, you guys have known each other since you were teenagers, correct? Yes. Yeah, we did. And we do did, you remember? We did. Uh, Shannon lived in this apartment complex, right? And we used to do donuts out there in the we snow did. With, with Mike O'Shea. Yes. Remember we did that? Donuts. Donuts. Right. Uh, we've we've done donuts not only there but JC Penny Outlet, yards and um, many yards. Like Farmer. Other Farmer Mo. Farmer Mo. Do you remember the first time you two actually like? Hey, what's or did, was it just one of those things where you suddenly you just sort of like were aware of each other and it was? I don't remember the specific nah, time. It was, you know, it like it had a bit of party. It was, it was Michael Shea. That, that's who I knew. Uh, it's kind of yeah. like, it, like most people you meet in your life, they're just there, and it's like you already yeah. knew them. Right. You know? Yeah, that's right. that's kind of how it happened. It was, uh, it was very organic. It was organic. It was, uh, you know, what music has always been a big thing with us between us, and and um, we'll talk. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll get into that, but whatever. But, yeah, that was probably the connection was Rush, probably. Rush. Well, everything during Just like me talking to Jim Parker last week when I talked about the when I was jamming with Outhouse. And, yeah. You know, we, oh, we'll my gosh. That. We'll talk yes. about that. And Zeros. We'll, and the, I never jammed with the Zeros. Yes, you did. Later. No, I did not. You that was did, Scooby. too. You we'll got up at the. That. It was. It was still the hurricane at that point. See, oh, so. And you got up and did Ozzy. Well, we did Ozzy with Outhouse. No, it was with the Zeros. It was with the Zeros. Yes. Okay. I would wow. not have let you up on stage with Outhouse. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. I, I totally would have. Whatever <laughs> you did, bro. No. It was Bill and Sean and you and I doing no, Ozzy. Except it was a different dude, not Bill. It was Larry. No, it wasn't Larry. I have, okay, are I we have an video. alternate I have timeline of this all of a sudden? Hey, know. can we take a break? Yeah, well, let's, let's take a break. That. We're let's going to le- relocate to get away from the uh, crickets in the background. So I am noticing the crickets. So we're going to relocate to the basement, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Part two of our interview with Brad Gaddy of the Zeros. Part two. And Outhouse. And Outhouse. Shawnee Mission North. <laughs> Shawnee Mission North. <laughs> All right. So we've relocated to the basement. The first part was out on the patio where we are hearing cars drive by and the crickets in the, the background. Locusts. So hopefully the locusts. Cicadas. The cicadas. cicadas and the uh, katydids. Oh, you know what? They are katydids. Yeah. yeah. All right, so both, we're back. Uh, they were both. We're still we, in we, the 80s. We're still, we're still in high school. We're still in the 80s, and then it started with symmetry. That's I, mean, I met you through Mike O'Shea at a party. Yeah. And mm. symmetry, I don't know, just, just talk about that. Very prog rock band. We often got uh, described as all three of us doing solos at one time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, so it's. It's you, Mike O'Shea, and uh, Kent Roberts. Kent Roberts, who I think is still playing, by the way. He is. Uh, I reached out to him on Facebook a couple years ago, and uh, he's doing well. I listened to some of his recorded stuff, and he was the, uh, if you remember, he was called the Shredmeister. Oh, sure. Yeah, and he was. I mean, he was, he really is a great guitar player. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was really good. We we just we did what we wanted to do, which was play as complicated as we knew how to do uh, music and write our own stuff, and it was fun. And we you know we got uh, kind of a big following, or at least a close yeah, group of friends. Sure, here in Kansas City, man. Yeah, it was you fun. You guys played what Lone Star? I mean, Lone Star a lot on Tuesday nights. Okay. Tuesday you know, nights. When, hey, we you know what? We were 22. What was it like? No problem. Were you drawing good crowds on a Tuesday night, or was it? Was it that was a different time? It was. It was. So, the interesting thing was that at that point, you know, we were uh, we were all like music snobs. So, we looked at so on Friday and Saturday nights, bands like uh, Fiance and foxy foxy yeah. and whatever were banshee. playing mm-hmm. banshee they were all yeah. playing 
Yeah, that was an era where it was all originals, wasn't it? Mostly. Yeah, and but but back in the Lone Star days when we were playing, like Fiance was not an original band. Like they may have had some some original music, but I was always like, oh yeah, you know, fuck those guys. Um, Is there anybody yeah. in that band that I would recognize, like Fiance, where they they just like who? What are those guys doing now? Or did you even know any of them? That's way yeah. before my time in Kansas City. Yes and no, and I can't remember. Um, That's okay. I can't. I can't, if, you, I can't if you remember, you could just. But yeah, but um, at that point, we were like, I was really jealous because we would get booked on these Tuesday nights or Wednesday nights playing for fifty dollars, and those guys were just like packing it and raking it in, and I was like, cover bands suck. <laughs> yes. No. I mean, yes. yes. And that yes. era, yeah. I was right there with you on that. I know. It was all about original music, and you guys had this progressive thing that. What what year was Kansas City? What year are we talking about at this moment? We're, this? We were talking about like eighty nine ish. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So 88, 89. Our uh, our big one at the Lone Star was opening for Robin Trower. I was there for that. You remember Robin yes, Trower? Robin Trower, who is, I didn't appreciate him till I saw him. Me, and, me either. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, I know a lot of Robin Trower right. songs. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, we, we opened up for, for Robin Trower, and that was uh, really great. But, yeah, it was like a lot of that stuff, a lot of VFW halls, yeah. a lot of like Battle just of Bands. Battle of Bands. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, do you remember when we played Swope Park one oh. night? We set up in the yes, main, main, like one of the main that. shelters. Right. And uh, as we're getting done, there's helicopters flying over. Oh, wow. As we're yes. loading up, and the mm. police came, and they're like, you guys need to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, there's so right. much history. Now, somebody, well, you know, I, I didn't move to Kansas City till 99. I didn't really start, like, meeting people until the photography thing blew up for me in, like, 06. So that's when I took the photo of you that we talked about earlier, and that's when I eventually, like, later that same year, I met Shannon. And, but to hear this history of you guys that dates back like 20 years prior to that's fascinating because I don't yeah. I don't really have a lot of friends from my high school that I still keep in touch with. So so where do you move from? Manhattan, Kansas, K State. Oh, I thought you meant Manhattan. Not that Manhattan. The Manhattan. Kansas. That's, the Manhattan that's two hours west. <laughs> no, I'm from the Mexico. Ma the Manhattan Missouri. that's an hour and 45 minutes. California. From you. Missouri. So, so, so yeah. Oh, so a California, Missouri. I did oh yeah, not but. Know. But oh, yeah. then again, we didn't do any cool things like, you know, learn music or play in bands and stuff. Just like me and my friends were sort of these misfit, land of misfit toys where we um, we really, we weren't preps. We weren't jocks. Prep, the preppies, that's what they called them back in the 80s. We yeah. weren't preppies. We jocks. weren't jocks. We weren't preppies. stoners. We weren't goth. Stoners. No, it was pre-goth. It was, it pre, it was pre but in the era, in that time, it was the goth. headband. Headbangers were the group. That yeah. was a that was a click in Manhattan. I, I was a headbanger. That yeah. was the Brad the head, fucking headbanger. We, so we were just you know, and it was before geeks became cool. I mean, I think I think today we would probably fall into the geek category. But back, so what? Like my thing is like my joke was that oh we're the wigs. Okay, so I think you might have touched on it. What kind of music was? Uh, so symmetry was what you it would call prog rock. Prog what? rock, heavy metal, like it was like screaming lyrics like not screaming like um rah, 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 rah. and we're like <laughs> i hope you die da, 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 da. oh hey that was yeah. it right there man stuff like that and you were the lead singer i was the lead singer yeah. and bass player yeah yes. three piece band it was different it was different it was uh hard for some people to listen to it's hard for me to listen to today <laughs> honestly i'm like oh my god that's awful so well, it, was, it was good times it was good. So and and, and, and and people liked it, so it was okay. Yeah, they did. So yeah. outhouse. Yeah, okay. Well no, let's let's tie that thought. We said you guys don't clearly remember meeting each other, but how did you fall in with Sean Pores and Larry? Larry Gross. Who well no Larry Gross is no, no, you guys are all contemporaries, even what was their other band? The Sons of Rex? Sons and, of Rex. Yeah, Sons of Rex. And so yeah. what came first, Outhouse or Sons of Rex? Sons of Rex. I didn't know them. Okay. So how did that all happen? Tell I us about that. That's I what... didn't know them at that point. So 
Sean and Bill. So Bill Lattice from the Elders, and he's currently with the Elders. Currently but with at the, the time elders, it was PC. Wow, perpetual change. Yeah. <clears throat> he, uh, him, and Sean lived in L.A. together. Right. And they were uh, pursuing a music career, and they played with some bands. Um, Big Drill Car was uh, who they toured with, but they were in a band called Naked Soul, um, and they they did they. They did a lot of stuff out there, but and Sean <laughs> Sean worked at Venture Theater. Incidentally, Sean was also in the Elders as well at another point in time. But that's just an aside. He was, he was right world. right before the Zeros. Yes, right before them. But but the, we're we're going back into the early '90s. I'm assuming, right? Oh yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. And so um, they were living out in L.A. Um, and they put together this demo. And they decided they were going to move back to Kansas City. And so um, they, they recorded this three-song demo, which was Welcome, Familiar, and um, I can't remember what... I uh, can't remember what the third song was on there. Maybe... Genius Boy? No, that came later. Um, but anyway, so... These friends of ours, so Troy Tribom was friends with Bill. He was he was closest with Bill. We all knew each other. I knew Troy, and uh, my roommate at the time, Chris Johnson, was also like friends with Troy and friends with Bill and all that. And um, Chris and I, when when we were in high school, we weren't really friends. But then we later at KU were walking across um, walking across the beach and and like. I see him and I'm like, hey, dude, Chris, you want to pull bongs? And, <laughs> and then we became, then we were roommates. And yeah, <laughs> then we were roommates at, K, at uh, KU. So anyway, so Chris and Troy basically got us together and they still fight to this day of who actually was responsible for starting Outhouse because I got the demo tape and then. Uh, they said, hey, they're trying out bass players, and they had tried out, like, four or five people, including, uh, you know, Joel, Horn Joel Hornbossel. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, yeah. He tried out for the band. Um, and uh, anyway, so I show up over there, and I had come out of Symmetry, and then I yeah. played with a guy in Lawrence for a while. But I was basically, like, kind of a mix between a – Heavy metal dude and a hippie or something. I don't know. I played played my bass way up high and whatever. And uh, I show up. To what the cowardly lions are today? Yes, as you would oh. say. That's not a joke. I'm just this huh. is a reference. So I, I show up to uh, to a rehearsal and uh, I I had studied the three songs that I knew and um, I felt like I nailed them. And Sean comes over to me. He's like, "Hey, man." Uh, you need to get a new bass, and you need to lower that thing. And I'm like, "Well, okay." <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, typical Sean Porce. Oh, okay. And uh, the the rehearsal space, which was Bill's house, was right across from Temple Slug, and our oh, our old okay. friend Reed yes. lived right across the street. Yeah, yeah. He did. Yes, he did. And I've got a good story about that later. Okay, too. But, fine. But uh, anyway, yeah. So did the audition, and they were like, "Yeah, let's uh, let's do this." And so Outhouse was formed then. Man, at that point. And that Dang. was named after the bar outside of Lawrence, correct? It was not. Oh, it was know, not. Okay, I misunderstood. Wow. You know, it only takes somebody from Manhattan, Kansas, to say that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, great place, by the way. Um, outhouse. That's a good place. You know, yeah, like no, if you're on a budget, and you can uh, bring <laughs> your own beer, that kind of thing. That was what it was known for. Yeah. I knew, I know that much. But prior to that, uh, people like Nirvana played there. Yeah. Wow. Green Day. Green Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. A lot no, of, a lot uh, of the there's great, other ones, man. And lots of great punk bands. Played yeah. There. Okay. Heck yeah. Before it was a bring your own beer type of thing. It was thing still with, a bring your own beer. I it mean, probably we, was, but there were yeah. probably as many paces. I mean, I've said, you know, probably, I don't know. There might have mm, been. Um, good times, though, at Outhouse. But the, but the band Outhouse was spectacular. They, you guys were spectacular, and you, I mean, you took off quick. 
It didn't seem. You correct. guys played. I mean, you played at. You guys were playing at. You were out there playing. You're at. I don't know. The Hurricane. I don't. I don't know if Lone Star was still open back we, then. We we did our. Uh, you know, our our version of touring was in in the beginning was Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, or you know, and we all had full time jobs. Yeah. Um, and I would we would play like St. Louis on a Thursday night, for instance, and we'd be done at midnight, load up the van, drive home, and then I'd go to work the next day to save wow. up vacation days to be able to go sure. tour. More. You know, yeah, because yeah, you know? you're 20, freaking three or four. You could do point. that in your 20s, yeah. not so yeah. much in yeah, your 50s. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, you know, I didn't, I, I don't know. I, I didn't, you guys were, you were hitting it. What was the furthest place you played out? I mean, traveling wise or whatever. Before, before, house. before. Or, I like, guess getting started. Yeah. Getting started. You know, we did, it was mostly regional stuff, like um, anything from, you know, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, down, you know. Close like, enough for a reasonable drive back home the same night. That's right. But we did do things like we played. Uh, so you, you've all heard of South by Southwest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Austin. Wow. Which, which we played that. But we also did North by Northwest, which is in Toronto, Canada. Oh, wow. And uh, we had this old van. And uh, <laughs> old van. An old van. I'm yep. visualizing Scooby-Doo right now. <laughs> no. It was kind of a uh, a metallic metallic blue van that we nicknamed Old Penis because it took a lot to keep it up. Boom! <laughs> it was beautiful though. I uh, didn't see that coming. We built we built in a rack. <laughs> he is, he's getting it now. <laughs> we built in a rack so that you could stack gear underneath. And then you could sleep on top, and you had basically two, three inches between your nose and the top of the van. And then uh, the woods were, the uh, walls were covered with plywood, and we had artists sketched, you know, in yeah, Sharpie and, right. and that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it was, it was a beautiful thing. Um, oddly enough, John Porras in his interview with Andrew Moore on yeah. Andrew Moore's podcast. Yeah. Yes, Andrew talks Moore talks about this, about how fucking small the and you we were sleeping in there. Oh yeah, in that shit. Yeah, yeah, you would sleep in there. So so basically, when we started out outhouse, um, you know, when you would do go do gigs, and it was like this it's with any, any any original band. You you were lucky to make fifty bucks a night. Yeah, and Fuck. so we would go on these little mini tours, and um, with those we didn't have any place to stay, and so it was very common. Like every night, up on stage, we would say, "Hey, uh, by the way, if anybody's got a place for us to stay, we would love that." Because yeah. we always pack yeah. sleeping bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so we would sleep on a lot of hardwood floors, but the people that would invite you over were always like, they were up for the party all night. And you really just wanted to go to bed because you needed to get up the next morning and drive to the next place right. and whatever. And so uh, this was an era where the bar owners weren't putting you up in a hotel like today. Oh my God, no. Okay. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't give, give a shit. They didn't think twice. They were just like, fuck no. you. No. Yeah. You were just you were just showing up, and it's like it's up to you to find a place to sleep. So it could be the van, but most of the time it was somebody's rundown house on hardwood floors, with a party still going on in the with background. With a questionable and, uh, female wanting you to share the bed. Mm. <laughs> Why do I picture no, it was not uh, Reed that. Ostrom? Reed Ostrom's house. Reed's house. He would totally do that if he was at a bar. Yes. And a band yeah. said, "Hey, we need a yeah. place to stay." Like, he would you know be what? like, "You're right, right on, bros. Stories. Come on over, bro." Yeah. He ain't bacon on stage for gosh. Sakes. That's right. That's right. So anyway, yeah, so it went from there, and um, at, we actually got our record deal at South by Southwest. Well, not not that's, at there, that's but great. that's where we met. The... I, seriously, and back in the day, I, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, man, yeah. I didn't know who what South by, South by Southwest was. And if you mentioned it, I didn't pick up on it. But, man, I mean, you played, that was early pioneer stuff. 
Yeah, right it, was, it was way before. It was way different than it is now, from okay. what I understand. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been for years. So we talk about South by Southwest in Austin. I hear it's yeah. very corporate. Corporate. Yeah. I, and back yeah. back then, it used to be. It was it was great. Like we saw uh, like Ben Folds Five in mm. this little patio area, wow. and I mean there was just really cool stuff going on. But so yeah, we, so we played there, got the record deal, and then our. Uh, our first tour out of the gate after recording was was uh, with Kiss. <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> Let's rewatch Outhouse. Welcome. Wait. Hold on. Love this intro. Hold on. Okay. Okay, so we're about to play Outhouse Welcome at Topeka. This would be ninety ninety seven. When you open for Kiss, correct? Yes. All right. All right. So what we're about to watch, and we will probably sync this up in the video clip. Is it the Expo Center or the Kansas Center? Okay. Expo Center. I saw Motley Crue and Cheap Trick here in ninety seven. I did too. You were at that concert? Yep. Uh, this is only my only time at the Expo You moved around a lot. I did. I was like, like a all crazy place, banshee. Man. Jumping <laughs> off bass drums. love this song. So we're watching a video clip of Outhouse's performance of Welcome at the Topeka Expo Center opening for Kiss in 1997, correct? Yeah. Alright. So we'll sync this in a video that we'll eventually post. Bill is a great vocalist. And he was he sang yeah. great in this. No, he did. Those leather pants. They were uh, ple- They were uh, <laughs> latex. I know, yeah. What? How was the uh, audience reaction? Were they just like "fuck off, get ready for kiss," or were they? Did they? Did you feel like no, you connected? Actually, actually, it was really, it was really weird because they warned us going into it. Mm-hmm. They're like, "You're probably gonna get booed off stage, right?" Because everybody's here to see Kiss, right? We had a great tour. There was only one night out of, we played um, five weeks with them, mm-hmm. two nights on, one night off, uh-huh. and there was only one night. Where we got booed at all. Who was that? What city? I don't even remember. But I it think wasn't it was Topeka. No. You no. probably had everybody I, I, out no, in force for you on not Topeka. Topeka. I was I was there for that. It was a great show. What it part really of was. 1997 was that tour? Was like summer or spring or spring? Yeah. Okay. So when you sent so when you saw Motley with Cheap Trick, that was November of '97. Yes, it was because I remember that was literally one week before Michael Hutchins of In Excess committed suicide. I remember oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I wow. was there because I know that because I was In Excess was my favorite band, and I remember I went to Topeka to the Expo Center, saw Cheap Trick open for Motley Crue. Yeah, and it was literally one week before it was like November, like one like November fifteenth. Yeah. So right with, at- with Keith. Right with Keith a- and his brother. <laughs> Keith and his late brother. Yeah. So right after Kiss, we toured with Cheap Trick. Oh, okay. And uh, we did a lot of East Coast stuff with them. Mm-hmm. And the entire time, so like um, Robin Zander was cool, but mm-hmm. Rick was the one hanging out all the time. Yeah. And um, he, you know, he would, he would hang out and talk to us and whatever. And so the final night of our tour was Bunny Carlos's birthday. Uh-huh. Wow. And Sean asked Robin or uh, Rick, he's like, hey, what can we 
what could we get him like for his birthday, whatever? He's like, if you get him a card and a six pack of Heineken or 12 pack of Heineken, he'll be your friend forever. So we go and get it, sign the card and whatever. That was the first night Sean spent an hour talking to Bunny Carlos. Well, then the show you're talking about where Cheap Trick opened up for Motley Crue, we got tickets or passes through the label or whatever for that. Mm Mm-hmm. And we went there, and then uh, Sean, like, took off with Bunny back because we got, you know, at the backstage stuff, whatever. So we're in catering. And him and Bunny take off and talk for, like, an hour before the show. (laughs) It was crazy. I know. I just remember. It's funny to know that that was 97, nine years before we actually met. But I was at that show. I find that fascinating. It is. It's cool. Because I was there with Keith. Okay. We were there All to right. see Cheap Trick and Motley, yeah. and I remember like Keith Stone, Keith Euling. Oh, I thought it was Keith Stone. No, <laughs> sorry, sorry, not quite. You know, but I remember. No, I, I knew who you were talking about. But yeah, I just remember. Yeah, that was a Jam. that was the only concert I ever saw at the Expo. It was Cheap Trick opening for Motley, at the Expo, and it was literally seven days before uh, Michael Hutchins committed suicide I, for oh, an, from an accident. Oh, there we go again. That's how I. Yeah. Oh, I'm just tying it into did how you, I remember that specific it's, moment. Did you know it's uh, National Suicide Prevention Week? It is. Is it this week? Yeah. It is this week. It is. It is. And that is a big thing. It is. So something that happened recently was that uh, Beth and I, so my wife Beth and I, Yes. We were both recently elected to the Board of Directors for NAMI, which is the um, National Alliance of Mental uh, Illness. So. We are uh, we're actively involved in kind of breaking the silence, community outreach, yeah. all of those things. So we're actually doing a deal um, tomorrow night um, for uh, it's you know it's a suicide prevention event happening at Indian Hills Middle School. So for the parents of those of uh, of kids to help them, give them resources. Educate him a little bit, all that. So excellent. Yeah, it's, you you recently had your twentieth anniversary concert as the Zeros. We did two months ago. Yeah, in July, and the Zeros. For those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of you who are listening to this are already familiar, which is why you're listening. The Zeros are a new wave '80s cover band. Hey, and there you go. and I'll and I got to tell you, you guys. Um, you know, I'd seen cover bands in Kansas City before, but it just seemed like, not to put those bands down, but it just seemed like a hack thing. It didn't seem, quote unquote, cool. Then when I saw you guys for the first time at the Brookside in November of 20, 2005, 2005, the, pace, the, the place was packed. That was the year of Rockstar in Excess, so your intro song was... Uh, pretty Vegas, which like got me revved up because In Excess is my all time favorite band, and I was that's pumped. a good song too. And yeah. and then I just remember Larry getting up and like putting his fingers up and everybody going crazy, and then he went into the new wave stuff, and and then it just opened my the the level of production, you know, the fog lights, the the lighting, and the sound was just like to me personally, it just captivated me because. I hadn't experienced that from a cover band because, you know, before the cover bands I saw were just sort of these, we're just, you know, whatever, you know, it just didn't seem as committed, you know, like, like they were just, nobody was like invested in what they were doing. They're just playing it. But you guys like took it to a whole other level that captivated me personally. Yeah. So, so when Sean approached you about doing that, I mean, well, or I'm assuming it was Sean that approached you. How? Did, well, no, tell me, tell us how that worked out. Well, so we had been playing for uh, together in Outhouse for six years, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know that kind of that ended. And do you remember the year that that kind of ended? Uh, 2001. Okay. Yeah. So then. Then you know, I had had a I had had my uh, first kid, my daughter Finley, and I was like, I'm not starting over again, and I'm not sleeping on hardwood floors, and I'm like, you know, I'm just like, yeah, I'm I'm done with that. But I still want to, and I'm and I'm not leaving for months at a time, right? You know, because that was the big thing too. It's like 
you're going to be gone forever. You come back and your kids are going to be strangers to you. Right. So at that point, I decided, like, I'm not going to do that, but we still, I still want to play. Well, Sean then, he got a gig with the elders and then started, um, I think they called it uh, My son, my Three Sons or... Sons of... My three, th- my three Sons. Okay, this is post which Sons was, of Rex. Which was Sean and Larry and uh, a guy named Brian Fannin. And they were a three-piece band. And they started doing New Wave 80s stuff. But prior to that, Sean and Larry and myself and uh, Lynn Buck had tried mm-hmm. to get together and learn a few songs. And then it, it like... It never, never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, then Sean and Larry, Larry played bass at the time, and Brian Fannin played guitar and sang, and that guy was, he was awesome. Uh, He's, he's since passed away, but Uh, man, he, he could sing like police stuff, whatever it was. It was like, it was really, really good. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so we had that, that band going with Brian and, uh, or they did. And I got asked to join. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And um, then shortly after that, we, Brian would never like, he wouldn't show up for practice and showed up late for gigs. So then we started learning some songs just with the three of us. Mm -hmm. And um, then basically we kicked him out of the band. (laughs) We made we made Larry call him, and Larry called and left a uh, voicemail. It started from there, and we were playing at, uh, it was Malloy Brothers, which was the old record, you know, after Malloy Brothers, they sold it to um, Sean. Sean, and they, they, uh, they had the record bar, mm-hmm. the first one. Yeah. And so that was the, but back when it was Malloy Brothers, that was the only place that would hire us. As a cover band. As a cover band. Because in that era, it was still yeah. kind of a, oh, cover band. Yeah. Well, then it just like, and so I, you know, I thought, honestly, like we had decent crowds and it was fun and people enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, this would be cool for three, four, five years, whatever. And uh, it just kind of blew up. And then we were playing, you know, 50 weekends a year. Like Friday and Saturday nights. Like remember, you mentioned the Brooksider earlier, and it was like we would play Friday and Saturday night at the Brooksider, lines out the door, just like packing it. <laughs> it was crazy. It was kind of at the end of a um, original music scene. Yeah, and exactly. We were the first first band to be playing. Like Brooksider didn't book any other bands. Yeah, like that. We were it, and then it was before, and then after that, you had like. 90 minutes and dull white mm-hmm. and perpetual uh, change perpetual, rattle. Well, perpetual change had been around since I was in high school, but they kind of disbanded and they, re- they, did. they did at that same time. But then there were all these bands that came, came together for the, you know, at the time it just kept building up and up. And then it was like, we were almost playing too much, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like to where it was like, oh my god! I remember talking to Zero, uh, to Larry Zero, at, and it was at a Brooksider show in about two thousand seven or eight. And I remember Larry distinctly telling me, "Yeah, we'll probably do this for one more year and call it quits." <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we, we and with that we are wrapping Bang. this show. Our Brad guest, Brad Gaddy of Outhouse Brian, and the Ryan, Zeros, a Kansas Brad, City institution. This guy on. What's up with that? And we That's very much appreciate yeah, this. Thank you so much. Thank you, know. you guys very much. We're, we're we appreciate it. You. Great. You've been fantastic. That's we very much stuff. appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, fun. Brad Gaddy of the Zeros. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to our podcast and all that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen. Kansas City Knights. Kansas City Knights. Woo!